camera. Which for you, because I mean, this film, in a way, is all about filming conversations. Yeah. Which I really like. I like the idea of how to make that cinematic, and that even before of the, the split screen and, and all that, just the idea of like being in a social dynamic that's unraveling and unfolding. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, you could say that, in a way, you built your entire cinema around that, because even your first film, El Futuro, um, sort of had that, that idea of like capturing a social dynamic collective. Yeah, yeah interactions and bodies. And yeah. How is that your, your like, that's your, your tool, your approach to cinema, it feels like it goes through that. Uh, well, the point is that um, I also write uh, narrative, show stories, um, uh, because at the beginning when I was studying, um, the, I had a lot of um, scripts of short films, fiction films, and I was never able to do them because I didn't have uh, money or team or the possibility of... And then I started to see all these uh, scripts like a pile, <laughs> and then I decided that, yes, to, um, that everything that could be fiction, everything that could be imagined, I'd like to uh, work it on literature. So okay. film should be something different. I mean, when I do filming on my own, because the collective work is a bit different, uh, I really th uh, think of cinema of a way of capturing uh, certain places, certain um, people. Mm -hmm. And for me, shooting, uh, it's creating conditions to make the unexpected, uh, the, the unpredictable happen. I mean, it's very important that I put a lot of people together mm -hmm. and then I develop some dynamics. And then in the moment of the shooting, the idea is that uh, creating a certain atmosphere mm -hmm. to make uh, the film uh, reach a place where my imagination cannot reach. Uh -huh. So it's okay. very important this material aspect of cinema for me. I uh -huh. mean, the idea of that we are working with actual people. Okay. But you only see like those people for you, the way that they can in a way transcend your idea is only by working with each other because they like you don't focus on individuals so much, uh, but rather the, the sort of sum of what they can create together. Hmm. How closely uh, planned was that, for example, in this film, which plays with the ideas of, you know, it's, it's back then, but it's also now, and it's, it, it's painstakingly recreated, but also it makes no mystery of, like, breaching that gap um, and, and reaching on, on to today. Mm -hmm. um, so how, <clears throat> how do you work on the illusion uh, those two. Well, yeah, I mean, um, uh, of course, um, the planning was complex. It was simple, but at the same time, uh, there were few decisions, but these decisions were important. At the same time, you, we, we were, my, my direction team and my screenwriter and me were discussing a lot which people how to relate to each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it was like, okay, we have this one, we have, we have this one, but how can we make interact together? Because some of them didn't uh, know each other. Mm -hmm. Even though in the film, they, it looks like yeah. they are friends and, and they've been working together for a long time. They don't know each other, but we kind of uh, put them in this uh, certain um, way of being and behaving. And at the same time, there was this idea of connecting with a film, connecting with a social class, two different crises, the 1992 crisis and the 2008 crisis, that it's the actual crisis that is in Spain, because uh, we are still under the influence of yeah. these 10 years of crisis, so the current crisis. So this idea of connecting two uh, crises, two times, uh, was important because the idea was also to uh, portray this social class who has suffered uh, most 
both crises. Yeah. I mean, and then with I develop develop with my team a sort of custom mm -hmm. and art direction. And even though the casting has, we were looking for people who were under the effect of the crisis, but at the same time they really look like and they really behave like people in the 90s. So there were a lot of questions uh, yeah. about it. We uh, look for custom uh, with Rebecca Duran, my custom designer, that could be uh, possible nowadays and now in the 90s and without, with the home movie format we were trying to give this idea a idea of a time capsule or a limbo mm -hmm. a place where hap it's happening in yeah. in two times at the same time yeah two times at the same time <laughs> yeah yeah i like that um because in el futuro the contrast was between this sort of optimism on the surface back then mm -hmm. and sort of like contrasting you with what happened and where it all led and a generation that grew up um, so in a way it was almost a bitter uh, comparison because it was you know when you, you go from the high and sort of reckon with the reconcile with the law um, but here it's like these people these two generations are united by this this sort of pain Mm -hmm. So in a way, this is a much more, um, in a way, it's a po more positive film because it's like a, a collective therapy uh, elaboration process of, of that. I really like to think the, the film in that way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, uh, you have to understand also that it may be, I don't think it, if it's the first film, but it may be one of the first films that have been shot in that region, in the whole history of cinema. And probably, I'm not sure, I don't want to be um, selfish or whatever, but I have the feeling it's the first film who has been shot in that region with people of that region, about mm -hmm. issues of that region. So there is also a lack of collective memory in that part of Spain. And, and we were trying to... Uh, gather all these voices uh, to keep them. Yeah. There's a line that stayed in my mind as one of your characters says, I do not remember it, but I lived it. And, and in a way, the entire film is based on that, this, this disconnect, because you know that this thing is there and you know that the effect it had, you know that it's just, it's just history, but then at the same time, you're sort of trying to combat the erasure of that. Mm -hmm. So it's like this different perspective, like, you know, I, I, I know that I was there, and yet, where is this thing in our, in our um, history together? Yeah, yeah, and the, I mean, for me, there, there are, I, you, you can develop this question in, in two ways. Uh, it's a model, mm -hmm. it's a global model. I mean, every emerging country uh, is focused by international capital flows just to invest but in the in the end it's not investing it's speculating with land mm -hmm. so a lot of uh, money comes from one area and it's always the same process world cup <laughs> olympic games and maybe expo ex universal yeah. exhibitions i mean you have it in lisbon you have it in spain you have it in brazil you have it in china I mean, it's always the same process. And it's never, uh, the, 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 this uh, wealthy, mm -hmm. this wealth, uh, this money is never shared. It is never redistributed by, with the workers. It's a lot of money which, which is uh, used for land speculation. And when the whole process has been done, you know, the whole stadiums and the whole roads and the whole airports have been built, mm -hmm. then the money goes to other place. So, of course, there is this common feeling. And at the same time, uh, this idea of having lived it or experienced it and not being able to uh, remember it, um, it's also connected to the idea of that the structure of society. I mean, because of the place I've been born, I was born, sorry, 
the meaning of that girl, uh, this, that character, uh, the social structure uh, behind me before I was born determined my life a lot. And, and happen, things happened before I was born, things happened where, while I was a kid, and even though I'm not able to remember them, uh, I still suffer in the consequences. Mm -hmm. of, not because of the decisions of my parents, not because of the decisions of my grandparents, because of uh, a structure that doesn't allow uh, that, those workers to uh, escape from mm -hmm. their conditions. Those TV spots um, <laughs> about, <laughs> again, the, the, the projects, the thing, the development, it just, where did you find them? And did you just take them and use them just like that originally? Yeah, uh, well, I found them in many, I don't remember if it was YouTube or, or some of uh, uh, video compilations from the data institutions mm -hmm. as they are uh, original videos made for these events. Uh, they were of public use. And yeah, I mean, it's like the main uh, official uh, narrative of that moment. For me, the Barcelona, the Barcelona holding uh, commercial is really amazing because in the end, there is a kind of rolling credits of all the big companies that in 1992 created um, Ibex 35, mm -hmm. which is like the stock exchange yeah. market, which was also created in 1992 of, with all these super big companies of infrastructures that all of them were created with money uh, of the winners of the civil war, mm -hmm. all of them. I mean, all the um, all the big uh, fortunes that are in Spain nowadays uh, were made by all the process of um, grabbing the the wealth mm -hmm. of the republicans that were exiled or dead. So uh, it's it's uh, it's ah. even though. Uh, <laughs> A uh, kind of uh, Michael Bay <laughs> commercial of Barcelona Holding is full of information for me. Yeah. Um, have you seen, speaking of Civil War, um, have you seen this film, Quasi uh, Locarno, Eloy in Ciso, Longa Noche? Which, in watching your film, I was really thinking about it because it also, in a way, does this trick of trying to. Um, deal with history and things that happen through this like this um, common people everyday people um, just chatting and like on a very basic level of personal interaction and sort of trying to grapple with these like huge huge themes and, and events mm -hmm. um, only that that is is um, set at the previous stage of um, in a way, it's almost it's a prequel to what you do with El Futuro and now with this. Like it traces back these events, uh, and that was about the Civil War and about Franco. Um, and then you pick it up at the end of Franco's regime with the with the elections in uh, in El Futuro. Um, you, you saw the film? You, you, you yeah, yeah, you I, I the... saw it uh, three days ago here ah. uh, because I wasn't I wasn't in, in Spain when it was uh, released. And I really have the feeling that the work of Eloy and my work is really, really connected because the, um, the introduction he made of the film and the motivations that he was, uh, uh, that, that he had, uh, very, very, very um, similar to mine. And it's, in both cases, is a way of understanding a very, very, um, broken present mm -hmm. and broken country with uh, and, and going to the past going back is a way of trying to understand the roots of the actual collapse so and, in, and in, at the same time the way he worked with uh, many authors and many uh, letters mm -hmm. and many 
private uh, letters of anonymous people is uh, it's something that I can feel really, really close. It's interesting because the Franco's dictatorship appears many times in my solo movies or the movies with the collective. It's like, I'm not sure, but any time you put your camera in a village or in a town or in a house, some of, I don't know why, as, as just at the beginning you uh, go a little deep and then all this violence yeah. comes up. I mean, it's in the, in the Futuro we have all these pictures of the album of photographs that appears in the materials. We were just yes, three days shooting and then there was a man taking us to a pit full of dead uh, people. And yeah, I was also surprised that in this film, there's an old man. They, they, the, the older people are all yeah. the time remembering uh, how hard they their family uh, was uh, living in the 40s and in the 50s. So but there's this one character, the old man, really striking moment when he's, he repeats three times, like, I like Franco. Yeah. I like Franco. And then it's like, kind of like, for, one time is just forgive me. That, I like yeah, exactly. It's one time is forgive me, I like Franco, and then he repeats it, and it's like, you know, give me the dignity of that, of like, back then, the, the historical moment. Because once again, it's easy to when you're framing it in cinema now, the perspective is kind of easy. It's, it's like, you know, the, the history tells the story that it tells. But like to, 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 to have that moment of almost like it comes up, the dignity of thinking, you know, in the context. Mm -hmm. It was really, uh, it was really one of the most um, touching moments in the film, the way that he repeats that. But do you still feel that you said it's a broken country, do you still feel that now, the effect of what happened and our generation, the work that was supposed to be done on sort of healing those wounds and uh, moving on to new challenges? Uh, well, um, the point is that um, Franco nostalgia is getting stronger in Spain, for example. I mean, uh, we have new far-right uh, parties that they are saying that, um, I mean, that they are uh, trying to, yeah, I don't know, to, to, to <laughs> I cannot say how to explain it, but, uh, Revive that, that yeah, I mean, for many time in democracy, a lot of people, uh, didn't say in public that they really prefer the dictatorship mm -hmm. and now it's being normal to say it, to say it in the streets. Yeah. I mean, there is so much uh, anger and poverty that in a way, uh, you know, being against politics, being against institutions that many people from different areas on different um, uh, ideologies can say that uh, it's uh, this is uh, giving uh, strength to to the idea of going back to um, a, a regime mm -hmm. which is uh, not democratic anymore. So I think uh, democracy is. May, may disappear in many countries. So I think it's important to understand that it's important to protect it every day. Because in the end I have the feeling, because this is a theory, that um, after the 2008 crisis, um, the global economical system, the big corporations realize that democracy is no longer useful for their interest. So, because you always have this idea, no, liberal democracies and capitalism go together because they reinforce yeah. the other. I don't think that's happening anymore. Oh, interesting. I think that in fact, uh, there is a powerful um, movement 
trying to uh, taking power from democracies. And that's the point in the end of the film when this union man asks himself uh, that he has the feeling that the European Union is more comprehensive with far right that with parties and governments that with, that with left uh, governments. So, yeah. I mean, it's something that uh, European institutions or international or national institution may may include in their agenda because uh, of course uh, this movement can um, uh, destroy these international solidarities. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.